Hello and welcome to Sorosa's classes. We move to the third case in the decision making section. This is a very interesting case. It talks about a kingdom in old times which had mountains and which, which had plain land as well. And it is beautifully connected to a business uh, company or set of companies I would say where the plains were producing were doing agriculture and were producing agricultural products and the mountains they had a lot of forest cover and they were supplying raw materials like water and other ingredients that were required for agriculture. So this is similar to a case where we have a group of suppliers and a group of manufacturers and the suppliers are supplying goods to the manufacturers. And the manufacturers are prospering because they are making goods and selling them. And the suppliers, they are not getting anything in return. So therefore, the manufacturers are getting richer and the suppliers are getting poorer. So this is the scenario. Now, the suppliers or the mountainous people, they, they started thinking that you know, let us also start agriculture, which means they also want to start manufacturing. And there's nothing wrong because uh, they are seeing that the people on the plains are prospering due to agriculture. They have the ingredients, they have the raw materials, they have water. So they wanted to start agriculture by themselves. But the problem was that if they do that, then the forest cover in the mountains will get depleted and if the forest cover goes then the raw materials that are required for agriculture will start depleting. So we have to conserve the forest cover in the mountains and that was the dilemma that was the problem that the king was facing. So the question is which of the following options is the best course of action for the king to take to ensure that the forest cover is preserved in the mountains. So let's see what are the options given. The first one says constitute a committee to protect the forest with powers to punish those who fell trees. Now this is a possible option, not a bad one. The second one says declare a mountain day when the plains people meet and thank mountain people for sustaining their agriculture. Now this will not help because what the mountain people want is money or something in return for the goods that they are supplying. So they also want to prosper. So they want also want to prosper. That is the problem. So in order to prosper they need money or something materialistic in return which was not happening. The third option says urge the elders of the mountains to come up with agricultural practices that ensure no erosion of forest cover. Now, even if they do that, then they will not get anything in return from the plains. And that is the problem. So, even if they come up with some kind of uh, advanced agricultural techniques to preserve the forest cover, they will not be able to get anything from the supply that they are providing to the plains. So this again is a possible option but uh, not a very good one that will not suffice their needs. Option D says institute a mechanism that ensures that the plains people pay royalty to be transferred to the mountain people for maintaining forest cover. Now that is what they want. They want something in return. So they are looking for some kind of materialistic return and royalty means money. So they will get money in return for preserving the forest and supplying the goods. So that is exactly what they want. So option D is the best option. Let's look at option E. Levy a tax on traded agricultural produce from the plains to cross subsidize supplies to mountain people. Now that again will mean that they will get a tax out of this agricultural produce and they would use this tax to subsidize some of the supplies going back to the mountains. Now this also would, uh, would be an option but 
option D, which says that they will directly get a royalty, which means the amount of money that they will get will be proportional to the supplies, is a better choice rather than the tax being used for to uh, cross subsidize products that are fed back to the mountains so this this would be less than option 4 which is a direct benefit so option 4 is the best one amongst all the five we go to the next question which says that uh, the king was afraid of further deforestation and he should dictate against the uh, felling of trees so the mountain people became poorer because of his dictat. You know, they, they were not able to, uh, you know, fell the trees and uh, they had to conserve the forest. They, they did not have any agricultural produce. So they started became, becoming poorer because they were not getting anything in return from the plains. So which of the following options? should the mountain people choose to best protect their long-term interest. Now, what, are the, what is the long-term interest? Long-term interest is to get something in return. And what can they get in return? They, they can get something in terms of money or material benefits. So, let's see what the options are. Charge a premium on the forest produce and issue hunting permits. Yes, if they charge a premium, on the products that means they will get money in return of whatever they are supplying to the people in the plains. So this is a good option. Option B says ignore the king's diktat and divert forest land for agriculture. Now if they do that then it will be a very bad situation because in that case there will be no forest cover in the mountains and therefore no supplies to the plains and the plains will not be able to produce agricultural products. The mountain people might start produce, producing agricultural products, but the overall wealth of the kingdom or prosperity of the kingdom will go down. So that will not be in the benefit of the overall uh, benefit of the kingdom. So this is not as good a choice as the first one. Then third one says, sell forest produce exclusively to the neighboring kingdoms. Now, if they do that, again the same problem will happen. So, if they sell this to the neighboring kingdoms, there will be no supplies to the plains and therefore the agriculture in the plains will come down. This will suffer. So, the overall prosperity of the kingdom will suffer. So, this is also not a very good option. Option D says, seek employment in the plains. Now, if they go to the plains, then who will supply the raw materials? There will be no one left to supply the raw material. So, therefore, the, again, the overall prosperity will suffer. The last one says, stop the flow of rivers to the plains. Again, if they do that, then the plains will not be able to produce. Therefore, the overall prosperity will suffer. So, this is not a good option. The only good option is option A. That is to charge a premium on their supplies and issue hunting permits so that no one can you know come in and, and hunt animals the, at their will so there, there will be a, a charge for everything and in the process they will also be able to prosper so this is in the best interest of everyone let's go to the next question the next question says that the villages or the village elders of the mountains, they told the king that uh, there is a very precious metal in, in some parts of the mountain. And if they mine this metal, then it will add to the prosperity of the kingdom. Now, the problem is that if they start mining this uh, metal, the forest cover will decrease. So, therefore, the supplies to the plains will decrease. So, therefore, the agricultural produce in the plains will decrease. Agriculture will decrease. So, it is a very delicate situation for the king uh, to take a call on whether he should allow mining or he should continue with uh, preserving the forest in the mountains and let the agriculture in the plains prosper and 
he can ask them to pay a royalty. So these are the questions that the king is dealing with. Now we are given five options which are advices given by his advisor uh, one pandit and we are asked to list out the the, the uh, options that he has proposed in the descending order of their ability to contribute to the sustainable prosperity of the kingdom itself. So that means what are the uh, decision points here? One is that mining is the most prosperous, is the most profitable. Then comes agriculture. But for agriculture, we need forest in the mountains because this supply the raw materials. So we need a combination of both. So let's see with what the options say. The first one says repeal the forest dictat and charge hefty royalty for mining in the mountains. So which means that he is telling the king that you take, up, uh, take back your dictate that no one can fell trees in the mountains. Let them do it and let them do mining but charge a royalty. Now if he charges a royalty then people will not be able to do this. People will not be able to engage in mining. So therefore it, it will not be productive. So charging a royalty for allowing them to do mining will not, you know, will not allow them or will not encourage them to get engaged in mining. So this will not serve the purpose. The second one says permit mining in the mountains and enforce rainwater harvesting in the plains. Now this means that yes you permit mining and you also ensure that there is some kind of uh, process that takes care of the water requirement for agriculture. So which is rainwater harvesting. So that means he is trying to balance between mining and maintaining agriculture. So this can be a consideration. Number three says permit mining in the mountains and begin afforestation in the plains which means that you start preserving forest in the plains, building forest cover in the plains and you allow mining in the mountains. So this also is going to strike a balance between mining and agricultures. So this is also something to be considered. Option 4 says continue with the forest dictat in the mountains. Now if he does this then mining would not happen. So this is kind of ruled out because he is trying to strike a balance between mining and agriculture. He, he cannot go with only agriculture. He is trying to explore how to you know start mining. So this is ruled out. Now we go to number 5 which says permit limited mining in rotation but maintain the forest dictat in the rest of the mountains. This is a balancing act which means he is saying that okay you have this much area in the mountains, you take this much area and you do mining here but in the rest of the mountains you maintain the forest cover. So that means there will be supplies to the plains for agriculture coming in at a steady rate at the same time you can start mining and you know take advantage of that high profit occupation to yield benefits for the country as a whole or the kingdom as a whole. So this is the most uh, logical step to take because it will strike a balance between the two. So number five as we can see is the most logical or the most balancing of all the five. So this should come first. Now let us see which options give five as the first one. It is option B and option E. Now let us see in option B what are the choices. The last choice is number one which means that it is saying that repeal the forest dictat and charge hefty royalty for mining in the mountains. Now this will definitely as, as we saw it will not yield the desired benefit so it can come in the end. Options E also brings one in the end so definitely one would be the last choice. 
and we have also seen that 4 which means that continue with the forest dictate in the mountains should come towards the end. Now B has 4 towards the end and E has 4 in number 3. So this one is not going to give us any benefit with regards to the mining process. So definitely 4 will be towards the end therefore B is a better choice and B says number 3 and number 2 should follow 5. So number 3 means permit mining in the mountains and begin afforestation in the plains. Yes, this, this will again this, this is talking about a balance. So you start mining and you ensure that the, the plains have sufficient forest cover to continue with its agriculture. So 3 is correct. 2 is also correct. It is also telling the same thing that you permit my mining in the mountains and enforce that rainwater harvesting is done in the plain so that the, the water demand is met. Whereas uh, number 3 says that afforestation is done in the plains which means you build forest in the plain which means all of the requirements will be, will be met. The raw, raw materials plus the water requirement will be met. So therefore 3 should come before 2. So 5, 3, 2, 4, 1 is the correct order of choices.